Okay, so I'm going to read a few poems also from a recent collection I've been working on. Um, and then I'm going to try to read this short kind of prose piece for one of my really close friends who just died, but I might cry, so we won't, maybe not. <laughs> if I do cry, it's not personal, don't be offended. Okay, so I'm going to start with the poems, I can at least do this. Um, theoretically. Okay, this is called On Impermanence. There's this way flowers wilt in the summer, their bellies full of heat and hunger. I've lost years like that, chasing an impossible, seeking always to pause forever at the good part. There's the lie. There's the spike I put my own head on. I just realized how cheerful these all are. I'll try to find you a happy one. Um, if not, I'll make inappropriate jokes in between them. This is called, uh, I just lost the file. It's called Exhale Longer Than You Inhale, which is good life advice and I should turn off my email. The blind cat has been hissing at the air again. There are easy ways to understand fear. This is one. Last night, I stumbled on the phrase mental inconsistencies. As I grow older, I wash my hands more, keep a cleaner house, pray for the wildness in me to take a tumble out. I find myself saying everything that follows what if or my head says is bullshit. Because as I domesticate, I say back what's been said to me, this time with feeling, this time with and then without despair. Um. Zoom readings are so weird. I can't see anyone's reactions. So, uh, you know, I'm just talking into the void. Um, okay, this one is called survival techniques. I think we can probably all relate to that. Um, knocked off the feet I carved to replace the first feet I was knocked off. Really, that kind of a year. That kind of a life. The subtitles to my imaginary movie reading over and over, Why Do You Forget? It's All Surprises. Some people preach external hope, but they aren't the ones I can listen well to. One says the surest way to go insane is to expect life to not hurt. And if I build tiny temples in my ears. I notice how bad I am at exhaling and a fortune cookie tells me, if you don't have talent, put in effort. It's kind of rude. Um, I think maybe the promised land is just being the kind of person I can look back on and not wholly regret. A friend explains the parable of how people are like an endless procession of candles. The trick is that we are not the wax, but the fire. So I pray, let me tend my fire. Let me tend my fire. And then I have a couple, well, I'll read one, called meditation. Make a mantra out of the instruction to love every creature that stands in front of you. Not naively, not foolishly, not, and this is important, helplessly. See fully and love anyway. See how little separates even the most feral. Say this not with your lips, but with your life. See, that one wasn't too dark, right? We're all still hanging in there. Um, and this one is called Solace. Three of the six in the photograph in front of me are dead, young and overdosed. But this isn't a poem about death really, as much as it is about still being here. Still being here and trying to make music from that. C tells me about thin places, offers a holy explanation for the way the saltwater marshes calm me, make me either very new or very old, shape me small, eternal, and honest. I would like to hold his hand, hand him that sense of connection. I would like words to give in the wake of all this nearby wreckage. Deaths like wave crests passing by, sweeping and startlingly irreversible. But I suspect if we get still enough, we all already know what we need to know. I have no fresh ideas. Love is not novel. Inside me is something gentle and honest that I give all I can to tend. I am sorry I gave you no warning for that one. It's been a wild time lately. Um, all right, I'm going to read one more. This one's just a breakup poem, so it's a light or dark. And then I'm going to try to do this little eulogy for us. Um, so this one is called In the Days After. There's a lot of beauty in the world, and then yes, there's a lot of other. Beauty buried. I leave you because you say sometimes you want this life with me, and sometimes you don't. 
Can you tell me this always happens? It's so bone splittingly sad the ways a creature can make a cage out of themselves. Daylight cracks like ice, daylight shatters. I regret only the times I was afraid and did not dance, but those moments were so few and you know it. Even this I would have told you, I would have told you anything. Anything in me you wanted, I was willing to give. There aren't enough words for the ways I unwrap myself for you, stood naked and more naked still. Unflinching and more naked still, breathing human, I have never been so honest. Let the record show, I know by now, to live means to love, and anyone who says otherwise is confused, which I know by now means stuck in themselves. I wish you knew this. It's so cold and bright in this new world without you, but the break is fresh. The man I thought you were crumbles out of my hands like snow mixed with ash. This song, when it ends, won't be so mournful, so full of frost. It will only be quiet. Okay, um, I'm also terrible at time. Hopefully this is decent, but uh, yeah, so this is supposed to be not too dark. It's a, uh, whatever, I'm just gonna read it. When asked to recite the Lord's Prayer, Bill would say, let's hold our heads up when we pray because we've kept them down too long. This is what he did. He raised our heads, hearts, and spirits. One of his last texts to me talks about how he was irrationally optimistic. That's how I've always lived my life. And what a beautiful life it was. We first bonded over politics. It was after the 2016 election and I was feeling particularly raw, suspicious of people until I knew their beliefs. Bill was an old white man from Alabama who wore suspenders and spoke passionately in his deep Southern drawl about those old boys in Birmingham who helped get him sober. One day I learned he was the husband of a friend of mine, a wonderfully sweet woman who cared deeply about human values and used to be a political activist. So I decided Bill was okay. Then I got to know him and realized he was more than okay. He was an absolute inspiration. I gave him a grandpa adoption certificate in 2018 for a reason, for many reasons. This is why it's been so painful to lose him, not just because he had a good heart, but because he was full of wisdom and love, because he was the type of person I could look up to in words and in actions. Because when a mutual friend called and told me he had died, Bill was the person I wanted to talk to about it. He would have known what to say about his own death to make it both beautiful and hopeful. And he would have been emphatic about how his God would see us through it. We first bonded over politics, but we stayed bonded over God and spirituality. Bill was a gift of a person and that those three worked together for him. He grew up in Birmingham in a deeply divisive time. He left home at 15, got married, started a family, went to work at the steel mills. He helped integrate the steel mills in the 60s, the only white man to shower with black workers, which was no easy feat and that alone could have made him a hero to me, but he did so much more. He went back to school later in life. After he quit drinking after many felonies and a stint on a modern day chain gang and became a public defender, a friend called me the day he died and talked about what an inspirational speaker he was. He kept telling me I could do anything I want to, she said, and he was the kind of man who would make you believe that about yourself. He overcame so many odds and believed with such a fiery passion in a God who could make all things possible. There was a lot of fight in Bill, and the best part is how he used his fire to fight for justice and devote himself to lifting others up. His granddaughter called me, sobbing, a few hours after he died. I was able to tell her he'd helped hundreds of people just in the small North Florida town we lived in, and I believe that was a conservative estimate. What a beautiful gift that is, what proof of a life well lived. I've been looking back through our text since he died three days ago. And I keep seeing his love and optimism shining through and his feisty spirit. The last time I saw him was a few months into the pandemic. He bought us matching Black Lives Matter shirts. And I went to his house to pick mine up. He was on oxygen, having struggled with COPD for years in his early 70s. And he still wanted us to go around in our shirts just to stir up some trouble. Since we don't quite live in the deep south, but we live just outside of it. And it's safe to say not everybody believes like Bill and I do did do. I can't say he's really gone because I know if I close my eyes, I can feel him with me. Amen, sister, he would say. Everything is all right. Everything is all right. Thank you for humoring me and letting me read that. I just um, really wanted to honor him and this was a good opportunity. I'm done.